So here we see George Biddle in 1936, the very man who knew FDR personally, having been a childhood friend, and wrote to FDR saying, we need to imitate the Mexicans and create a public arts program. Here he is as a participant in that program, which was the Works Project Administration's Federal Arts Project. And we see him kneeling paintbrush in hand before the mural that he's creating titled Society Freed Through Justice. And it's in the Justice Building in Washington, D.C., the very center of power. And here we see a photograph of those murals painted in the architecture of the Department of Justice. And you can see how much Biddle has been influenced by Rivera. This entire federal art project is very much exists because of the Mexican mural movement. And artists like Biddle are very closely studying and learning from all three of the great muralist, but especially Rivera, because of all the work he did in the United States that had so much kind of was in the public eye. So you see the sense of a history packed in that's related to the architecture to create a kind of epic storyline with multiple figures arranged around the room, like Rivera's Detroit industry murals. One of the things that's hard to appreciate is the amazing scope of this project. How many artists created how many artworks in public spaces across the country? This website is nice for getting a feel for that, titled The Living New Deal. It's a kind of archive and compilation of all of the artworks, and it is arranged by state and city. So there are actually comprehensive state pages for certain major states. But you can see if we just start with California, 2,061 items and California does have a comprehensive page. So we can click there. So this page kind of gives an overview of important monuments, artworks created in California. This particular mural is one that we'll look at that they show at the header there. If you look down, you see that there's lots of stuff, photographs, different categories. It's worth noticing that part of the Works Project Administration wasn't just what we consider artworks, but also things like structures built in Yosemite. So public, um, public facilities, public amenities, such as trailheads and bathrooms and state parks, this was all developed in the New Deal as well. So this is a giant sprawling set of accomplishments, but let's just go to San Francisco and look at art in San Francisco. So one New Deal artist working in the Federal Art Project who was, had, was a direct conduit to Rivera was Victor Arnatov, who was actually an apprentice to Rivera, worked directly with him on projects that Rivera did in San Francisco. And we can see the influence of Rivera's style and his principles in the murals that Arnatov painted titled City Life at Coit Tower. You can see that Arnatov has learned from Rivera how to make these kind of hefty, solid figures that feel all the more like the salt of the earth, the people of the earth, because of their solidity. How he's learned to kind of pack in all sorts of anecdotal, interesting things that are going on that tell us about the texture of life from the guy reading the paper to the, the officer on the phone to the workers with the, the hand crates. And really, he's particularly interested in the life of the city and the life of ordinary working class people. There's the auto ferry to Oakland sign. He's got city lights is being advertised, Chaplin's film. So he's committed to the idea of social realism, this, this term that meant at the time that the art would be socially engaged and it would use more or less a, a realistic <clears throat> approach to rendering figures in order to show the social reality of the times. This had very much a political charge to it, in that this was associated with sort of a social awareness and a social justice that would be kind of the result of showing the world as it needs to be 
created for the people. So one of the things that Arnotov is doing in the Coit Tower murals, here's another panel, is he's giving us a kind of history painting of history as it's beginning to happen now in, in the lives of ordinary people, history as it's unfolding. And we have this tremendous sense of being kind of in the thick of the bustle and the hustle, which is a sense that history is being made, that he's painting not the great history of FDR and the major leaders, but actually what is today called history from below, which is a term historians use to talk about the history of kind of ordinary people's lives and how that has changed over time. Arnatov also did a series of a, a set of murals at George Washington High School in San Francisco. And in these murals, he did the big kind of history, the history from above, but also from below, because he was assigned, his, his task was to create a, the history of, of George Washington, since the school is named after Washington, but his commitment as a left-wing social realist painter working in Rivera's mode, his commitment was to show the dark side of Washington's legacy, not to treat Washington as a kind of sanitized hero, but to actually talk about the truth of genocide of Native Americans and of Washington as a slave owner. Again, we can really see how Arnatov learned from Rivera to create complex sets of stories interacting with stories by creating a complicated spatial architecture in which we see events happening in the background. We see figures interacting in a way that is very carefully detailed to show us emotion, expression, gesture, to make us see a story happening. And then to, to kind of construct in our minds the way that all of these different figures interrelate into a larger whole, some kind of an overarching narrative, which is the epic sweep of history as involving huge amounts of people, events, consequences. So Arnatov makes Native Americans, African Americans very central to what's happening. If history is story of things, is a set of stories of things unfolding, we are meant to pay close attention to this man doing his work, this man leaning over doing his work, this man, not just the white man in the high class clothing with the whip and the hat, who seems to, who is usually the protagonist of history. We are to understand there are other protagonists happening in other spaces in this world. Arnatov understood his social realist painting to be exposing the contradictions at the heart of America's claims to be a land of liberty and equality. And he exposed them by showing the victims the oppressed, those who are being subjugated in order to have America's claims to manifest destiny realized. So one particular panel shows Washington sort of forcefully extending his arm in this very strong pose of command as settlers march westward and a Native American man lies on the ground, dead, exposing genocide within this story, this narrative of America's westward conquering. I'm convinced that Arnatov was thinking actually about Rivera's harrowing scene called the liberation of the peon, this incredibly devastating image of a laborer who has been tortured, whipped horribly to, on the brink of death and who has been, is being helped 
by these revolutionaries who are covering him with a blanket and tending to his wounds. And I love how Rivera puts in the horses with their eyes staring out in this condemning way, as if the innocence of animals is condemning this horrible, violent, cruel crime. So Arnatov thought he was using social realist painting to tell a history that was more complicated than simple myths of freedom. Ironically, in the last year or so, a controversy arose around these murals in which a group affiliated with George Washington High School made a complaint to the San Francisco board, school board saying that they considered the, the murals to be racist and offensive and wanted them destroyed. There has been a huge outpouring of media discussion, outcry, outrage, concern, about what will happen to these murals. The San Francisco School Board decided, announced that they would in fact destroy the murals, that it would cost $600,000 to do so, and that the alternative covering up the murals would cost $825,000. With a massive media outcry, they backtracked and said that they would instead cover the murals. It is unclear what is actually going to happen since there has been so much confusion with the current pandemic. What we have to think about as students of art history is how whether Arnatov's intentions have carried through legibly to the audiences of today. He was confident that he was a social realist painter working on behalf of the oppressed, exposing the false, the falsehoods of those who oppress others, but that is not how everyone sees it today. So this will be something for us to debate. <laughs>